Now we're going to move on to the next uh, circuit theorem, the Thevenin's theorem. Um, I believe you saw this in uh, 111 and or ET 131. Now again we're going to apply Thevenin's theorem to AC circuits. As applied to AC circuits, it provides a method for reducing any circuit to an equivalent form that consists of an equivalent AC voltage source in series with an equivalent impedance. So it's a way of simplifying a circuit um, and doing some uh, analysis on it uh, to, to help us understand as we're looking into an open port or if we remove the load off of a circuit, looking in through the, cir the circuit load port, port, the output, and determining what's going on inside the circuit. So the form of Thevenin's equivalent then is shown in the figure below 1912 where we have a Thevenin's equivalent source and a Thevenin's equivalent resistance. Regardless of how complex the original circuit is, it can always be reduced to this equivalent form. The equivalent voltage source is designated V Thevenin. The equivalent impedance is des designated as Z Thevenin. Notice that the impedance is represented by a block in the circuit diagram. This is because the equivalent impedance can be of several forms, purely resistive, purely capacitive, purely inductive, or a combination of any of them resistance and reactive. So the block diagram represents an AC circuit of a given complexity. This circuit has two output terminals, A and B. A load impedance, Z load, is connected to the terminals. The circuit produces a certain voltage, Z load, and a certain current, I load, as illustrated. By Thevenin's theorem, the circuit in the block can be reduced to an equivalent form as indicated in the beige area. So we can see that over here. Uh, it looks just exactly what we see in 912. The term equivalent means that when the same value of load is connected to both the original circuit and the Thevenin's equivalent circuit, the load voltages and currents are equal for both. Therefore, as far as the load is concerned, there is no difference between the original load, the original circuit, and the Thevenin's equivalent circuit. The load sees the same current and the voltage regardless of whether it is connected to the original circuit or to the Thevenin equivalent. For AC circuits, the equivalent circuit is for one particular frequency. When the frequency is changed, the equivalent circuit must be recalculated. So the idea here is if you're sitting over here to the right and looking into the, an open port A and B, you're seeing everything that has been reduced down to one equivalent voltage and one equivalent resistance. So the equivalent V Thevenin is one part of the complete Thevenin equivalent circuit. The Thevenin's equivalent circuit is defined as the open circuit voltage between two specified terminals in a circuit. Let's assume that an AC circuit of some type has a resistor connected between two specified terminals A and B. If we wish to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit for the circuit as seen by this resistor then placed outside the output here, the V Thevenin is the voltage across terminals A and B with the resistor R removed. The circuit is viewed from the open terminals A and B and R is considered external to the circuit for which the equivalent Thevenin is now found. So let's take a look at an example to help us understand it a little better. In this circuit we've got a resistor R1, an inductor that's already been calculated for its reactance, X sub L. We've got a source at 25 and 0 degrees in volts and we've got some load resistor on the output. In this problem we're going to determine the Thevenin equivalent for the circuit within the beige box as viewed for terminals A and B. So the first thing we do is we remove that load resistor and determine the voltage from A to B, i.e. V Thevenin. 
In this case, the voltage from A to B is the same as the voltage across the inductor, X sub L. This is determined using the voltage divider rule. So the load, V load, is equal to X sub L at 90, and the sum R1 plus J X sub L times the source voltage V sub S. That's our 25 volt. So when we do this, of course, you can see that we've got a polar form in the numerator, a rectangular form in the denominator. So what we need to do is convert that 100 ohms at plus J50 to a polar. When we do that, we get 112 at an angle of 26.6 ohms. Now we can use the quotient relationship, 112 into 50, and then 26.6 from 90 when we subtract it in the denom in the numerator and we multiply that by 25 at an angle of 0 for the voltage source. When we do we get 11.2 at an angle of 63.4 degrees voltage. So the Thevenin voltage then across looking in the ports VAB equal to the load across that resistor gives us 11.2 at an angle of 63.4 degrees in volts. So that's a fairly simple um, analysis uh, of a circuit, an RL circuit, um, that we take the output across the inductor. <clears throat> Let's take another quick one. Determine the Thevenin voltage for the circuit within the a beige area as viewed again A and B. So in this one you can see we're going to have to do some collapsing and analysis to calculate this. The Thevenin's voltage for the circuit between A and B is the voltage that appears across A and B with RL removed from the circuit. There is no voltage drop across R2 because the open between A and B prevents current from flowing. So it's like that resistor doesn't even exist. Okay, So VAB is the same as what? The voltage across the capacitor, X sub C2, and can be found by the voltage divider formula. So this would look very familiar to what you saw with just resistive, purely resistive circuits. So VAB is equal to the voltage across the capacitor V. The voltage drop across C2. So there is our voltage divider relationship, X sub C2 at an angle of minus 90 degrees, and R1, X sub C1, X sub C2 then in the denominator. Again, we've got a blend of polar and rectangular, so we're going to convert to polar, and then we're going to use the rules for a polar uh, analysis to calculate the voltage across that capacitor. So when we do that, we end up with 3.16 at an angle of minus 61.6 degrees in K ohms. We divide that, that 3.16 into the one and a half, multiply it times 10, we get 4.75. And when we add 71.6 to the minus 90, we get minus 18.4 degrees in volts. So the Thevenin voltage, V Thevenin, is equal to the voltage at that port, VAB, gives us 4.75 at an angle of minus 18.4 volts for our Thevenin.